Hey everyone, welcome to the third video of the Illustrated Data Structure series. Today we will be talking about the linked lists. A linked list is a linear collection of items where each item points to the next item in the list. Before we talk about the linked lists, in our last video we talked about the arrays. The arrays used to have a few limitations. Number one, the items are consecutively placed in the memory. Number two, they are fixed in size. So for example, if you defined an array of seven elements, you can't add the eighth element to the same array. Number three, the elements of array must have the same type. So for example, if you have an array of numbers, you can't add a string, character, or a Boolean value into the same array. And fourth, the insertion and deletion operations in the arrays are much slow. Now, if we talk about the linked lists, we don't have these limitations in a linked list. So items can be placed anywhere in the memory. They don't have to be consecutive. They have a dynamic size. So you can keep adding more elements to the list without defining the size of the linked list. And the elements of a linked list do not need to have the same type. So you can have a number, a Boolean, or a string value in the same list. And also the insertion and deletion operations in the linked list are much, much faster as compared to the arrays. All right, let's look at how a linked list works. A linked list is a set of elements which contain the data. Each element is called a node and each node has two parts. The first one is the data, which is the data that we need to store in the list. And the next one is the memory address of the next node in the list. So each node takes some additional space in the memory also, which is to store the address of the next node in the list, which helps in linking all the elements of the linked list together. Now, if you look at the last node of the linked list, we don't have any other node after that. So for the address value of that node is null. So this is what the linked list is. A set of elements where each element has two fields, one to store the value and the other to store the address of the next element. Each element of the list is called the node. The first node is called the head of the list and the last node is called the tail of the list. Again, these nodes can be stored anywhere in the memory. They don't have to be consecutive and all we need is the addresses to link the nodes together. All right, so now that we know what the linked lists are, let's look at the operations you can perform on the linked lists and the complexity of those operations. Here we have a linked list with three character values, R, O, and A. And the head of the linked list is pointing to the element R. The first operation that we are going to look at is insertion. We can insert an element at the start of the list. So for that, we create a node, put the address of the current head into that element, and we change the head to be the newly created element. To add an element at the end of the list, we create the node, make the tail of the list refer to the newly created node, and we put null in the address of this newly created node to make the tail of the list. Next, if we have to add an element somewhere in the middle of the list, we create the element, we make it refer to the element before which we need to insert this node, and make the previous element refer to this node. And that is how we add a node somewhere in the middle of the list. It doesn't matter if you insert the node at the start, end, or the middle. The complexity of inserting a new node in the linked list is constant. That is O of 1. Now, if you remember inserting elements into the array, let's say that we need to insert a new element at the second place. In order to do that, we need to push all elements by one index ahead to make room for this new element. And then, once we have the space, we can push the new element at the second place. The algorithmic complexity of this operation in arrays is linear, that is O of n. If you compare this with the complexity of insertion in the linked list, you can see that the insertions in the linked list are much, much faster. All right, so next we have the deletion from a linked list. To delete an element from the start of the list, all we have to do is change the head to be the second element. To delete the element from the end of the list, we make the second last element refer to null instead of the last node. And to delete an element from somewhere in the middle of the list, we take the node before the node to be deleted and make it refer to the node after the node to be deleted. The algorithmic complexity of deleting a node from start, end, or the middle is constant. Now if we compare the deletion of an element from the arrays, let's say that we have this array and we need to delete the third element of the array. To do that, we delete the third element and pull back all the elements one by one to fill this empty space. The complexity of deletion from arrays is linear, that is O of n. 
Now again, if you compare this complexity with the complexity of deleting from the linked list, you can see that the deletion from linked list is much, much faster as compared to the arrays. All right, so next we have the traversal of the linked list. Traversing a linked list is just visiting each node of the linked list. For example, to print the node or do some operation on the value of each node. To do that, we start with the head element, read the value, do the necessary processing, then read the address of the next node, visit the address, read the value, read next address, visit the node, read value, and keep on repeating till the last node is reached. And to check if the last node is reached, we just check if the value of the next address is null. The complexity of traversing the linked list is O of n. Alright, so next we have accessing an element from the linked list. Let's say that we have this list and we need to access the third node. Unlike the arrays, we don't have the indexes in the linked list. So we can't access the third element directly. We will have to start with the first node and keep on traversing the linked list till we reach the element which we need to access. The complexity of accessing an element from the linked list is linear. That is O of n. And if you compare that with the arrays, in the arrays the complexity was constant. So this is one of the drawbacks of the linked list also, that accessing the elements is much much slower as compared to the arrays because you don't have the access to the index or some kind of a pointer to get the node directly. Alright, so finally we have the types of the linked lists. The type that we have looked so far is called the singly linked list. So we have nodes where each node has two parts. First part is the data that we need to store in the list. And the second one is the address of the next node in the linked list. Next type is doubly linked list. Doubly linked list is similar to the singly linked list also, but each node not only points to the next node, but it also has the reference to the previous node. So in singly linked list, we have nodes where each node has two parts, data and the next node address. In the doubly linked list, we have the additional field in each node, which refers to the previous node in the list. All right, so next we have the circular linked list. In circular linked list, the tail node, instead of having null value in the address, it points to the head of the linked list. So we have this circular arrangement in the nodes. And finally, we have the doubly circular linked list, where each node points to the previous node, and the first node points to the last node also. All right, so now that we have covered the theory, let's look at the practical implementation of the singly linked list. So here I have two classes, one is for the node and one is for the linked list. If you look at the node, this is what each node of the linked list is going to look like. So each node has two properties, data, which is the data that each node is going to hold, and next, which is the property referring to the next node in the linked list. Then we have our linked list class, which has two properties, head and the tail. Head points to the first node of the linked list and tail points to the last node of the linked list. Then moving on, we have the prepend method, which accepts a value, which we are going to prepend in the beginning of the linked list. So with that, we first create a node. So we pass the value that we received in the prepend to the node, and we set the next to be the current head. And then we change the head to be the newly created node. And for the tail, we are checking first that if the linked list was not empty, which means that the tail was there, then don't touch the tail and keep it as it is. But if the tail was not there, it means that the linked list was empty. So current node is both the head and the tail. Next we have the append. Similarly for the append, we are accepting a value. And then we are creating a new node with this value. And we are setting the next to be null. Because this is going to be the last node and there will be no new node after that. And then we simply have a check to check if the linked list was empty. If it was empty, then use the newly created node as both the head and the tail. But if it was not empty, then take the last node that we have right now and make it point to the newly created node and then change the tail to be this newly created node. Similarly, we have the traversal. So we start with the head and we keep on looping, reading the data for each node and moving on to the next node till we reach the last node where the next will be null and this loop will break. Next, we have the find method, which is similarly traversing the whole linked list starting from the head. And it keeps on iterating the nodes till it finds the node that we are looking for. Next, we have the deletion. And the deletion is quite simple also. We are just checking 
If the head is empty, then we can't delete anything, so just return. But if there are more than one nodes in the linked list, then we are changing the head to be the second node after the current head. But if there was only one node in the linked list, then we are changing the head and tail to be empty. And next, I have this to add a method which is just traversing the linked list starting from the head and it keeps pushing the data in each node to this items array and then it returns the items in the end. And then it's just a bunch of lines to test the implementation of the linked list. I have added the link to the project in the description below, so feel free to check it out on the GitHub. And with that, our lesson comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you in the next one.